as you may already know, we can use MoGraph and fields to control the animation of objects, of uh, clones, and that's extremely handy. But in some cases, this won't work as you would expect it to for certain reasons we're going to look into in the next few minutes. The specific question was asked by Lee Williamson, whose website link you will find in the description text below. Go and check it out. He has some interesting work there, and uh, I enjoyed going through his website. So let's see what these problems are if we go to the original scene. Here we have these four objects, the heart, the emoji, the anvil, and the thumbs, and uh, they have about 25 frames of animation each and you can see when I scrub I can see the animation happening so far so good now let's go and add this to a cloner I'm gonna create a cloner I'm gonna set the cloner to be in linear mode and uh, let's go and put all these underneath I'm gonna set the cloner to create four copies and I'm going to zero out the Y and uh, spread them out on the X so again, if I scrub, you will see that everything is animating. Now, in case you didn't know, if you want to control the animation using an effector or a field, you need to go to the cloner, go to the transform tab, and down here where it says time, set the animation mode to fixed. Now in theory, if you scrub, nothing will animate, but you see the thumb and the emoji are animating, but the heart and the star are not. Now let's take this a step forward and select the cloner and let's go to the MoGraph menu and bring up a plane effector. In the parameters, I'm going to remove everything and go to the time offset and set this to 25, which is the maximum value of animation we want. Now you will see again, if I scrub here, the emoji and the thumb move, but as you can see from the thumb, the thumb moves, but not its controllers. That's interesting. Now, if I take this plane effector and go and change its value, you will see that now the other two are animating, the controllers are animating, but not the rest. So we have some sort of discrepancy here which we need to fix. And uh, just to extend it ever so slightly, select the plane effector, go to the fall off and add a linear field. And I'm gonna turn off the color for now. I'm gonna move the linear field, and this is the apparatus by which we're going to modify the animations. And you can see that we have the same contradiction where some of these things are animating as expected, but some are not. So what is the reason? Well, MoGraph can only interpolate between animations that have keyframes. We cannot do that with procedural animation and stuff like that. It reads the keyframes of the parameters and does this uh, transition through time using the values we've provided. But in the case of the emoji and the thumb, we have the following issue, that the animation is not directly applied on the elements of the model, but it's actually using some sort of proxy method. For example, let's go and uh, see what uh, exactly is going on here. We will see that, um, let's take the glasses, for example. I'm going to turn off my cloner, and let me go and select the glasses, and see where the animation lies in the glasses. If we go to the objects that make up the glasses, I'm looking down here and going through them, you will see that they don't really have any animation. Let's go here. There's no keyframes here. So how is this animating? Well, if you look closely, you will see an Expresso tag. And if I double click, you will see that they have used a set driven set driver. And uh, this uses an expression, an Expresso expression to drive the animation. But because we are doing the animation using an expression, the particular animation we see here is not going to be used by the cloner or the effector. So that is the main problem. And we can see the same thing if I close down the emoji and go to the thumb, you will see that we have the same issue, that the hand itself, look here, let's find some keyframes, no keyframes, no keyframes, no keyframes. 
and there are no keyframes here, but the keyframes, I would guess, exist over here where the controllers are. So the controllers who have the keyframes assigned to them are the ones that can be controlled by MoGraph. So if you play the animation, the controllers here, look at these nulls over here, they're not moving. But if I move the field through them, they will animate. So the rule is uh, safe and sound. Only the objects that have keyframes directly applied to them or their parents will be the ones that will be animated. So let's go and solve this problem. And uh, I'm going to treat the thumbs differently than I'm going to treat the emoji. So as far as the thumbs is concerned, because we only have one main object, the hand that uh, is rotating, it's quite simple. So let's go and bring up our dope sheet. Depending on if the automatic mode is on or off, uh, make sure it's on uh, for good measure and then take the hand and drag it here. And now you are in user mode. And with the hand selected in here, that doesn't have any keyframes, as you can see, what you can do is go to Functions, Bake Objects, and uh, do the following. Turn off everything and turn on PLA. This will record for every point of the object its position after it has received its animation. Now, because I don't know exactly what animation it has, that's why I'm not doing any position, scale, rotation, and all that. I'm just setting PLA animation, which means point level animation. I'm going to bake the whole frame range, uh, although it's only going to bake uh, the frames that have keyframes. I'm going to bake everything, expressions and so forth, and I don't want to copy. I want it to replace the original object. Now press OK, wait for a second, and now we have these 25 frames. Now when I go back to my viewport, you will see that the hand has been severely distorted. That's because it's receiving both the PLA and on top of that, it's receiving the deformation once again. So just turn off the skin and basically you can go and remove all the controls. You don't need the controls. You can just keep the hand here. I can even bring this up and remove this null and turn on the subdivision surface. And now what you will see is that the animation is the same, but now all the information for that animation has been recorded on the keys of each point. So as you can see now, if I turn this on, we can go to our linear field, move it around, and you will see that the thumb is turning, the heart is breaking, the anvil is rotating, but the emoji is not doing anything because we have to do the same process. And again, if I scrub here now, you will see that the thumb is not rotating. There are no more of those controllers available and so forth. So we've solved the problem for the hand. Don't forget to save a version with the original as well. I'm going to return this to the linear configuration, so we only have four of these clones. Now for the emoji, it's a bit more complex because we have quite a few different objects that's doing things. So uh, let's check these out. And uh, the best way is to turn off the cloner, so you can go and isolate this. Um, we have uh, the head, you can go and name it. Uh, appropriately we have the teeth uh, and we have the glasses and we have the arms and we have the lower teeth and we have the tongue so uh, i could go to this and start uh, adding those pla animations but i'm going to do it in a slightly different manner to begin with because maybe it is better for a different sort of layout and this way you have two different ways of uh, doing something quite similar more options are better than none so the objects I'm going to bake is the head. So I'm pressing command and the teeth and the glasses and the arms and the lower teeth and the tongue. Now, the reason I'm selecting them all is because I want to create a connect object for each and every one of these. So press Alt on your keyboard, click here and go and create a connect object. And because I'm pressing Alt, it's going to create a connect as a parent of every single one of the selected objects. Now, they are still selected, the connect objects. Make sure that you unclick the weld so you don't run into any optimization 
issues. So with the well unselected, uh, what I'd like to do is just copy and paste the names so that at any given moment I know which one of these objects is which. What I am going to do while I'm doing this is bake these to Alembic files. And uh, because Alembic files do support hierarchies, the best way to bake the actual mesh as an Alembic is to put it under a connect object. Now what I'm going to do is select the connect objects. And I can always go and close the hierarchies so there's um, not so much visual clutter. I don't even know what this is. I'm going to ignore it. So head with command or control pressed. I'm going to select all these. And I'm going to right click and say bake as Alembic and delete. So it replaces them. It's going to take a few seconds to bake all these to Alembics. And each connect object should become an Alembic file. Now I can get rid of the original. I can get rid of anything I don't need within this hierarchy. And what you will see now is that we still have the animation going nice and strong. Excellent. Let me zoom out. And now I'm going to activate the MoGraph setup. If I scrub, you can see that this little dude is still moving. So there's one more step we need to do. Remember, this is an Alembic file and it hasn't had any keyframe animation since it was baked. Before we proceed into baking the values of the animation to PLA, there's one more step we need to do. We need to select all these and make them editable. Now, in its current form, the information about the animation that has been stored in the Alembic goes directly from the file to the object's geometry. And uh, that actually won't allow us to go and bake these to our uh, timeline. So if I go and say uh, dope sheet and let me bring in, let's say the tongue, select the tongue and say functions bake and PLA, this is going to fail. If I press OK, you will see that no keyframes are going to be generated here. And uh, that is because that's how the Alembic connection with uh, each model works. But if I select all these and make them editable by pressing C on the keyboard, in this particular case, the model now exists in its uh, static state and uh, the data is read by the Alembic tag. And if you go here, you will see the file. Now, because we actually have a real Cinema 4D model that just has points that move around. If I select all these, I don't need the teeth sub two. Go over here and let's drag all these in here. Now, if I select these ones and go and say functions, bake objects, and let's go and set PLA, don't create copy, press OK. Now you will see that the PLA keyframes are going to be added to these objects. So you have to make them editable and you can see what's going on here. So now all our animation has been baked to keyframes. So if I scrub, nothing happens because I have my cloner activated. But if I take the linear field and move it through these, I'm going to be able to animate them using MoGraph effectors and uh, the fixed time we have here in the transform tab. So I hope you found that useful and it will allow you to create more controllable animations using MoGraph. And thank you very much, Lee Williamson, for the question. Please don't forget, subscribe, turn on the notification bell and leave a nice comment below. It feeds the algorithm.